So apparently you guys want to know like everything about cinematic renders. I watched Dune movie in the cinema, Star Wars Episode 9, not in cinema, and also Foundation TV series on Apple TV+. Plus. Now I am qualified to tell you about cinematic rendering. So the first thing is aspect ratio. In cinema, we have usually the aspect ratio of 2.39. The width of the frame is 2.93 times larger than the height of the frame. And this is the cinematic rendering aspect ratio. Now you have your nice uh, cinematic aspect ratio, black bars, all that stuff. You have to fill it somehow. So how do you do this? You need a story because cinematic rendering implies the word cinema, which means movies, right? A movie usually has a nice story unless it's like has a four star rating on IMDb. What kind of clothes should the character wear? What is the weather? What kind of vehicles were available on the streets at that time? All that stuff. It just helps things to be more coherent. For example, let's say I maybe want to make a nice render about the Death Star, a tank, then Vladimir Putin. I could make them the most visually pleasing render in the world, but story-wise this is just nonsense. Make sure you have like a nice story, a reasonable logic behind what you're gonna do right. Now your story is in place, everything is flowing nicely, you know the characters know what you're gonna do, what you're not gonna do, you don't have any tanks or Vladimir Putin's there. Now you need composition. Let's use references because you know there are a ton of movies, mm, yes, there are a ton of movies out there. Probably there is a movie that is uh, having the same color schemes, composition, all that stuff that you want to use in your scene. Let's look at some examples, for example this one here is from Mad Max and you see how the composition is tied to the story in a really nice way. The dusty thing here is very massive, very prominent, is taking like 90% of the frame, okay maybe 65. The characters themselves are really small down there. This seems simple but actually this is as simple as it is. I mean composition just has to show what is the most important thing in the scene. What are the most important things in this scene right now from the story standpoint? Of course the characters riding in the sandstorm and then the sandstorm itself. Characters themselves take a little little part but to counter that there is a bright spot behind the characters so that they create more contrast and also human eyes see a luminosity before they see anything else so your eyes are naturally drawn towards the bright thing there. Let's look at some more examples. For example here you see there is the mountain line, like a faint one but still a faint guiding line uh, towards the tower and also something bright in the sky between the character and between the tower so that everything is clear. I mean immediately you're just gonna look at the bright thing there and after that you're gonna like see okay character tower character tower i understand what's going on here right some other composition types are uh, center composition which you are seeing right here i'm in the center of the frame or for example in star wars also you see leia hugging gray although there are some things you want to avoid with center composition and this is placing things exactly in the dead center of the scene i mean if you really 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 want to show like the power of something this is in the center of the scene it might work. So for example in this shot here from Star Wars you see uh, this character has been placed a little bit on the uh, right side of the image and also these triangles are placed a little bit on the left of the image. If they would be kind of like a line this would give like a really strong focus on the character but he is even not the main character of the movie so this doesn't make any sense to put him in the center like that. So this is something you should avoid when using center composition. There is also diagonal composition for example this one here and also one from Star Wars see there is like this lightsaber that is a guiding line to the character of Rey so it, this is like pointing your eyes towards Rey so it makes things very clear right you don't have to over complicate this just make sure that things that have to be visible are visible things that are maybe not so important are not visible case closed you have done a really nice composition now let's talk about lighting and after that color because uh, human eyes see lighting changes before they see color changes so there is a really sweet example from Star Wars Hans Solo and his son uh, Kylo Ren. They have been placed in a really strategic way. Look at that. Kylo Ren is dark so he has been placed on a very bright background to create more contrast. His father is more bright so he has been placed in a darker background to create more contrast. This light shadow light technique is used like a lot in movies. Look at the face of Rey. The face of Rey is bright and the background is dark where there is the face of Rey. 
And where is the hoodie of the ray? It's here. And is it dark or bright? It's dark. And is it on the bright or a dark background? Of course, on the bright background to create more contrast. The lightsaber, is it bright or dark? It is bright. So is it on the dark background or bright background? Of course, it's on the dark background. So this creates more contrast. I'm also trying to do this right now with my lamps or lights. If I remove like a piece here, so you see the back wall is lighting up, creates less contrast between me and the wall, which is bad. You don't understand what's going on here. Is it me? Who is talking? Is the wall moving? I don't know. So this is how I'm trying to create this kind of cinematic wipes here. A really nice uh, way of using lighting is to enhance the story. For example, in this shot right here, you see, what is it? It is ray. Also a wayfinder, which is kind of like a fancy word for a compass, right? This object here is from the Empire. It is a dark object somewhere in the middle of a abandoned, broken Death Star. So it's a dark, sinister place. And look at the lighting. Behind Ray, there is some light. So it implies that Ray is coming from a brighter place. And she is like trying to get the wayfinder and on the right side of the image there is absolutely no light at all this is just black this is like telling us that this is like a scary place you know ray comes from the light and tries to take a thing from the darkness and this is very successful in my opinion for example if you would have something bright on this side this is like uh, I mean, yeah, we have a wayfinder in the middle of some, you know, dim lit environment, you know, I'm just gonna grab the wayfinder, I'm gonna go, but now, right now, this is dark, this is scary, this is, you can understand what's going on here, right? So try to motivate your lighting by your story, your scene, you can oppose characters, one of them is in darkness, one of them is in light, one of them has red colors, the other has blue colors, okay, this is for about colors, okay, oh, may, may. anyways, you can understand what I mean, right? One last example about lighting is this thing here, you see Ray is climbing uh, in the middle of the Death Star, the lighting is pretty classic, so you have the key light on the face of Ray. I do have a key light here actually as well, you see when I turn the key light off, my face isn't lit at all, because I also film on my phone and the camera quality is shitty. Also, you have the fill light, which I don't have, but Ray has, just to get rid of that harsh shadow, right? Then there is the rim light, which is creating contrast between Ray and the background. And also there is a very important lighting technique here, which is called the God Rays. They're not pointing in a random direction, they're directly there, just to show us where Ray is. So everything in the scene is working towards Ray. Also pay attention to the fact that the background isn't lit. I mean, it's of course lit, it isn't pitch black, but it is darker than behind the god rays. And this is again to create more contrast. Now let's talk about colors because I mean, who doesn't like colors? I assume most of you see colors. This kind of makes sense to talk about them as well. We have a shot from Blade Runner. What do you see here? Everything is yellow. Why? Throughout all the movies I watched, the Dune, the Star Wars, the foundation. When I dragged through the timelines of those movies, obviously in cinema I couldn't do that. Then I understood and I discovered that most of the shots have a single prominent strong color. So for example, here you see, okay, this is yellow, it gives like a hazy vibe, you know, but also in Star Wars, look at this scene right here, but mostly blue, right? Then we have something yellow because this is pretty heartwarming. There are like a ton of examples. For example, this uh, dust scene from the beginning, you see completely yellow. Make sure you have one color that has the most power. Of course, there are scenes that have, you know, color harmony. For example, the face of Ray is lit with a relatively warm light and the background is blue. So this creates like contrast. So as you see right now, I am like, I don't create any contrast with the back wall. I'm just a plain yellow, blob in the middle of a yellow wall. Obviously I need something to create contrast and I think this looks a lot better actually. For my scene what I did is that I used a strong blue palette or a turquoise, turquoise, I don't know how to pronounce this, bluish kind of like a master light here and then uh, some occasional tips of red because red is more powerful than blue. I mean this shouldn't be used too much, it's like adding a tiny bit of chili, it works the same way, you don't have want to have too much of it, it's also red, kind of like the same thing you know. And now we have finished the composition, color, story, what was the first one? Aspect ratio, right? So we have finished all of those things, your scene might be looking pretty good already, but what is the next thing? What do you have to take into account? The sense of depth. So how do you give the sense of depth? We have bokeh, we have 
fog, we have perspective and also foreground out of focus, which is, mm, I mean, kind of like the same thing as, as bokeh, but actually like a really good example of how to use this, not just in the background. So let's start with bokeh. There are two types of bokeh. There is a spherical bokeh and there is anamorphic bokeh. What is the difference between spherical and anamorphic? What, what are you telling it? Spherical means comes from the word sphere and the lenses have this shape of a magnifying glass or like a basically like this pot lid you know if you put two of those together we get this spherical lens and this creates spherical bokeh kind of like a normal bokeh 99% of the renders online have spherical boring bokeh but in cinema we have anamorphic bokeh anamorphic lenses are more expensive harder to build harder to use, uh, they produce stretch images which have to be stretched in post to be normal, uh, to produce the wide angle ratio of 2.93 actually, which is why we use this ratio in uh, movies. But they also produce this really nice um, oval bokeh. And to use this anamorphic bokeh in Blender and be different from 99% of the renders online, you have to go to the camera depth of field settings and there is the ratio of the, um, of the lens. So you just are gonna crank this up to for about two, let's say, and you have this anamorphic uh, nice looking bokeh, right? Which may makes everything a lot more cinematic than it used to be with just spherical bokeh. Now before we go on with fog and perspective and uh, all that stuff, I'm gonna do something that I have never done before which is asking you to subscribe. Why is that so? Why am I just like the other YouTubers right now? Why am I asking you to like, comment, subscribe, send money, buy merch? Okay, I'm not gonna ask you to do this. I have an objective of reaching 25,000 subscribers by the end of this year so that I can buy myself a camera which is kind of like, you know, if I don't reach them, I'm not gonna buy a camera if I reach them. I don't have to continue filming with my phone. If you help me, this would be great. If you find these things helpful, of course, I'm not just like slamming the subscribe button into your face. But if you're, you know, finding some value in this, then you just might consider that. So thank you for your consideration. Now let's continue with the sense of depth called fog. So fog gives us a vast environment, right? For example, in this scene right here, you see, this is obviously giving a lot of depth to the scene. And that's everything about fog. Just make sure you don't add too much of it and it's gonna be fine. You can also use perspective to give the sense of depth. You don't have any fog or bokeh or some fancy stuff here, you just have a massive perspective. And this is giving a really nice uh, sense of uh, really vast and open space. It has been used before, so probably you shouldn't be afraid of using this as well. And the last example of giving depth is the foreground out of focus. So for example, if I have something, let's say the same chili here, you know, I'm gonna put this like, okay, there is something that is out of focus here, right? I am between the chili and also between the wall, right? So you can understand I'm in a space, right? Everything is very clear. In movies, of course, you don't do something very like a shaky chili manure. You are, of course, gonna use something more refined. For example, in this shot here, you see there are some cute owls, owls, uhus in uh, in German, uh, but <laughs> anyways they have something blurry in front of them. They are between something, we get the idea of the depth. And just a quick breakdown of how this shot works, look at that. Composition, thirds, lighting, large environment light and also a strong rim light. Then we have complementary colors, blue and warm. Something in the foreground out of focus and we have some two really nice characters, of course. Let's go on with this uh, imperfections, you know. So, grain. Why is there even such a thing as a grain? Why don't you want to have a perfectly clean image? Grain comes from the days, from the old days, when we had film strips of 35 millimeter film uh, strips. <laughs> and um, there was basically the problem. The film strips have some silver on them and the silver creates uh, some things that are, some areas that are brighter, some areas that are darker and a lot of this stuff. And this creates this grainy look. In digital world, we have the brother of the film grain noise, which is RGB digital noise, which doesn't look good at all. Um, I mean, I don't wanna say that the film grain looks particularly pleasing, but it actually gives the film look. And to do that, what you have to do is to go to the compositor and add a film plate and put it together with overlay, right? And you have grain, pretty simple. Now we have arrived to the infamous chromatic aberration, which everybody loves to use, overuse, including me, myself and I. So actually this happens when the light comes through the lens and it breaks into different wavelengths. And this creates the separation between different channels of light. 
you shouldn't be adding too much of it because in film world you're using nice lenses of course you're not using some crappy i don't know aliexpress lenses you're using some nice anamorphic lenses so you don't have too much of it you just have a little tiny tiny amount you're gonna go to compositor and add a, a lens distortion node and here you're gonna add some dispersion not too much or if you want to get like really psychedelic then you're gonna add some more of it right the next thing is lens distortion which actually gives quite a lot of depth to the scene or like gives like a, an impression of a vast space like fisheye lens so um, of course I mean this planet here isn't realistically having this shape here I mean this would be like the third group of people we have like uh, the round earthers then we have the flat earthers and we have the curve earthers or bowl earthers I don't know you're gonna go to compositor and add with the lens distortion node just cranking up the lens distortion let's go on with lens flares they happen because the light passes through the lens elements and some of them have some coating some of them have some imperfections and in the end you're gonna have a lens flare it actually ties together the background and the foreground and the cg and the real footage now how do you add those in blender actually you can render those i made some research and i found that you can render out actually physically correct lens flares for example with a render engine like luxcore which is this bi-directional path tracing so this means you get actually those nice caustics and light interactions all that stuff of course this is just an idiotism right you're gonna go to the compositor and you're gonna add a lens flare image like that which comes on a black background which means in the black parts we don't add anything in the colorful parts we add some colorful things and if you're interested in how you can actually find lens flares well on google you know you don't have too much of those become a patron where you can have 20 lens flares i mean use those in your renderings print them out use them as a birthday card to your grandma if you're interested the patreon link is down there in the description as always and the last imperfection light trap can you believe this we are in the end so what is that flashlight in a in a wrap no this actually isn't this is when light is um, kind of like bleeding so for example on this photo right there is uh, some light bleeding over so this is something that is very useful to add to your renders for example when compositing skies over a subject this is something that actually is adding a lot of realism to your scene and when you have done all of that there is the final step the last of them all which is the final great melancholic scene a bright scene a i don't know instagram filters everything is possible there amplifying the main color of the scene is also a good idea there but anyways this is everything i know about cinematic rendering if this was useful please consider subscribing this is the end ciao